You're worthy of glory. You're worthy of honor. You're worthy of adoration. You're worthy of our lives and our heartfelt devotion. Let's pray this morning. Lord, we give you everything that we have, all of our hopes, our dreams, our ambitions, our regrets, our failures, our limitations. We place them all before you because this is the highest thing that we could ever do, but to offer our bodies and everything that's related to everything that we've ever done and are doing and ever will do with our bodies as a living sacrifice, this is our reasonable service. So, Lord, we come with no hesitation, with no doubt, with no anxiety, that this is the best thing that we could ever do with our hearts, with our lives, with our bodies, is give them to you. Because, Lord, we know this one thing, that you've won every battle. You're winning every battle. It might seem like you're not, but you already are because you have a way of, of flipping the script on our circumstances. We don't know how you do it, but in the end, we're grateful that you do it. And Lord, for every battle that we'll ever fight, that will ever be waged in our lives, you've already won it. You've already purchased the victory. So Lord, we thank you for all that, and we thank you for your Holy Spirit here in this place. Would you continue to do exactly what you want to do in this place? But for all of these things, we thank you, God, and we honor you. For we ask all these things in the most wonderful name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, give Jesus a mighty hand clap this morning. Oh, come on, give Jesus a mighty thunderous applause this morning. Woo! It is good to be in God's house on this beautiful summer day <laughs> and we're so glad that you joined us here I almost forgot what season it was but then I checked the forecast and I was like oh yeah that's right it's summer welcome to the father's house in Thomas my name is Mike the small groups pastor and we're so glad that you joined us here today why don't you welcome somebody here if you don't recognize them introduce yourself welcome them into the Lord's house right before you take your seat You can go ahead and be seated. If you are new with us and you have not filled out a Connect card, then would you do that right before you leave here today so we can keep in contact with you? Because if you've been searching for a church home, then congratulations. Your journey and search has ended with our church because we believe that our church is the greatest church on planet Earth. And if we didn't believe that, then we should join another church. So if you've been looking for a great one, then consider your journey ended and your search ended. So would you claim your swag bag before you leave today by filling out one of these gray Connect cards? You'll be glad you did. And for those of you parents who have been praying, Lord, we need a date night. The Lord just answered your prayer, my friend. Parents night out this Friday. And the youth said, yes, Lord, we are still raising funds for rally. And yes, Lord, we do want to answer parents' prayers. So we are going to have a parents' night out on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> so parents, you get your date night or whatever it is that you want to do during your time movies, whatever it is that you feel like sleeping. That's a good idea. A lot of parents are tired, especially moms are always tired. Remember, mom was always tired, always, always, every day of the week, always tired, because moms are always doing something. And then, yeah, dads, too, you're, you're doing stuff, too, yeah. So this Friday, support the youth and stick around right after today's service, because especially if you're getting water baptized, we'll give you a cue of when to prepare for that. But stick around and support those who are taking their next step in their journey of faith by undergoing the waters of water baptism. We promise that you're... Up to, up to year to date, we have not lost anybody. We've not kept anybody down longer than they should be kept down there. Um, we've 
done scientific measurements and made sure that one second before you're about to drown, we pull you back up. So how about that? That's the way that we've never lost anybody. Today is our last day. Someone say last day. Yeah, we made it all the way to our last Sunday here at the Benvenuti, guys. And if you've not checked out our brand new building, for us it's brand new. It's been there for a long time, but for us it's brand new, so it's, we're going to call it brand new. Our brand new building at 1513 Sports Drive, then would you go ahead and do that? Because starting next Sunday, we will not be here in the Benvenuti. We will be over there at the new building. And here's where you can partner with us. If you cook, if you DoorDash, if you Instacart, if you Postmates, if you do any of the above, if you factor, whatever it is, you get free prayer meals, then you can partner with us by bringing meals to the crew because we're going to make a big push this week that we get in there and the building is as beautified as possible because I know that no one wants to show up to a dingy, scrungy building. It's like, oh, man, why didn't we get this together? And if you see there's anything left out, it's because we didn't make enough of a push and we didn't partner together. So would you join with us by bringing meals? You can come clean. You can come um, be at Art's direction as he shows you what to do and fixes your mistakes. As <laughs> Just kidding. But especially if you have the skills, then let's make one final push this week so we can get into our new building and it can be as good looking as possible. So check with the crew. Check with our check. If, you, if you're wondering who to check with, it's the guy in the white T-shirt over there to my right, to your left with the OG T-shirt. You can't miss him. Talk to him. He'll make sure to direct you to the right place. And now as we prepare for our tithes and offerings, there's something supernatural that a natural act like giving accomplishes. See, when you give in the natural, something supernatural happens. And you might say, well, what did my little bit matter? It matters so much that Jesus recognized a poor widow who gave the equivalent of like $1. And he said, she put in a lot. Not because the amount was a lot, so the amount is not significant, but the heart with which you give it is significant. And did you know that giving is such a powerful act that somebody like, he comes on Fox News all the time, he's written books, his, he, he's a self-avowed atheist, his name is Larry Winget. He encourages people, find a church in your neighborhood and tithe to it. A, an atheist is encouraging people to tithe to local churches. He says, why do I do that? Well, because something magical, he calls it magical because he's an atheist. We call it miraculous, right, because we believe that God is real. He says that something magical happens when you do this. I don't know how, but somehow, some way, the deals that I wanted to come through end up coming through. The opportunities that I didn't even anticipate were going to happen end up happening because I got God on my side. How many want God on your side? Me too. And so here's the good news. The power is within your wallet or your purse. You just need to make the decision. God, I want you on my side, in my finances, and then you sit back and you wait, my friend, with anticipation to the way that God is going to come through. And when that phone call comes, you, come on, man, answer it. You know, Christians throughout the years, they say, God, would you pray? Would you bless me? And then when the call comes, they're like, oh, I'm too busy. I'm too tired. I want to binge my favorite show on Netflix. I'm like, you've been praying for this for years. Your blessing. When your blessing comes, answer the call and respond to the way that God wants to reward you for those who, pros who want, for those he wants to prosper financially, who get him on their side. Can we give Jesus a good hand clap this morning? So thank you for all you generous givers. Let's stand one more time. And why, would, why don't we just, for the sake of it, just because we love Jesus so much, give him another big thunderous applause today <laughs> as we get ready to hear the man of God. Come on, give it up for Jesus today. 
Come on, y'all, make some noise in the house for the Lord. He's worthy of glory. Amen. He's worthy. Thank you, God, for your goodness. I want to pray, and then I'll have you seated. If you can, would you lift your hands to heaven as just a symbol of surrender, of just saying, God, whatever you want for my life today, whatever you want to say to my heart this week, just do what you want. God, every, all our hands are lifted for this purpose. We yield. We surrender. We trust you through the ups and downs, the peaks and the valleys. We trust that you will lead us and guide us. You've led us for the, through, the, through launching this church. you led us through the pandemic. you led us through re relaunching. you led us through a hotel and then back here again and the NPR and then back in the theater, back and forth. And now you're leading us on a new chapter, and we're grateful for a place to call home. And we pray that today, God, just do what you want in us individually, in our homes, in our lives. Continue to do your wonderful, fulfill your wonderful purpose for this church body. We're yours, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And the church said, amen, amen. Give a fist bump or a high five to two people. Tell them it's good to be in the house with you and you can have a seat today. It's so great to see your faces, guys. Exciting times ahead for us at, here at TFH, Natomas. I'd like to welcome all our guests today. Would you put, it, put your hands together for all our guests and those who invited and brought friends and family. Thank you for being in the house today. Um, if you don't, if you, if you're like, I'm, this is a new church. It's 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 kind of uh, uncomfortable sometimes to walk into new rooms. We, want, we hope that you'll feel at home here today. And if you have not, you don't have a church that you call home. We'd love to, uh, we'd love for you to leave today, saying I found a, I found a place to call home. We'd love to be your pastors and to be able to uh, uh, do life with you. So um, if you have any questions, you can see. Uh, I'll be out at the tent after baptisms. By the way, we have, we have people going public with their faith. Give it up for them. They're going in the waters of baptism. And for all the people who make fun of me for opening my water and not drinking it. Ah, that's for you. <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> I had to do it. It's our last Sunday here. <laughs> Couple things as we we're it's a it's a very very exciting but important week for us as a church because we have just this week and we are moving into our new home. Are you thrilled about that? Are you excited about that? So we do want to say thank you. First of all, to all those who give towards Imagine our Imagine campaign, and that that's fu funding a lot of this work that's taking place, the renovations, the remodeling in this building, and then the, in a couple of years in the future, the expansion, uh, whether that's in the current space or uh, th that our new home or, or even beyond that. Um, but we're grateful. Thank you for giving and, and going above and beyond. Um, and we in, in a couple of weeks, if you didn't have a, if you haven't received one of those cards, make sure you pick one up. But in a couple of weeks, we're going to be um, extending our campaign. Um, and it'll actually be next week. We'll be in our new home, our new building, and we'll fill it, bring those cards. Hopefully you've been praying about, God, what will you have me to give? If you're already giving, you'll have an opportunity to extend that through, I think it's January or February. Um, and uh, it could be a monthly, it could be a, a one-time gift, but you want to say, I want to I help fuel the vision and the mission of this church to change lives, to impact lives for the glory of God. So if you didn't get one, in fact, you can take that home and you can start to pray about it. If you haven't already, just raise your hand and Usher will put a card in your hand. Say, I'd like to partner. I want to get involved with that. Many of you got one last week. But if you didn't, just raise your hand. They'll put one in your hand. Um, and then bring that back next week. And if you lost it, don't worry. You'll be able to have some available to you next week as well. But the second way to get involved uh, in addition is to, um, like, is to get your hands dirty. And uh, we're thankful for all those who have been laboring to uh, do the painting, uh, thankful for, for, for those who have been doing the construction, the sheetrock, the, uh, the ceilings, all that stuff, the electrical, the lighting. Could you give it up for all of those who have been serving and volunteering? We're, thank you, guys. We're working hard. Um, it's just incredible to see what can happen in a matter of weeks when people partner together. But we are down to the wire here, and we need as many people to get excited and say, I'm in, I'm all in, we're all in. So if this is your church, tell your neighbor, if this is your church, 
or even if it's not, <laughs> we welcome all who would like to serve. Would you come out this week and serve with us? We'll be there, what is it, Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday? Some, some will be on Saturday during the day, but for sure the evening's 5 to 9, is that correct? 5 to 9, if you have questions, you can actually see Art right here. You can see Eddie, oh, he's, he's helping coordinate all the teams and everything. And listen, this week, it, we're ripping out carpets and floors. It's, it doesn't, it, you don't have to be a professional to break stuff. <laughs> but we're ripping out those carpets. We're going to prepare and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, uh, what's it called? I keep forgetting. What's that? Scrape. We're going <laughs> scrape. <laughs> Very complicated term. Uh, we're going to scrape the floor so we can get pr pr prepared to put some nice finish and have them nice and uh, be beautified in preparation for uh, our first service there next Sunday. Um, we're yeah, come on, get, put, go ahead, give God some. <laughs> so, literally, come in and just rip stuff out, and then after that, we're cleaning. You don't have to be a professional to clean, but if you are, that would help a ton. But we. Come on out during the week. If you give a couple hours, you can give a night, two nights. Just give your best, and together we can make it a place that we're proud of from the get-go. Are you ready for this? So where are we sending folks? Um, you, can, you can just go to our website, tfhnatomas.church, and you can uh, s just fill out the form. That lets us know because we, we have food coming out every night. And sometimes we don't know how many people are coming. So help those who are providing food um, by doing that. And you can also go to the connect table in the, te the tent and say, hey, I want to help out this week. So we know you're coming. But can we all do something this week so we can be ready to go and see God do something special in our new home? Can we do it? Come on. It's going to be great. And just to clarify, this is not, this is like a soft opening because even as we move in, there's a couple of things we want to fix up. We're going to do some more work in the kids' area as well as the warehouse. But um, I think we're, we're going to probably take down a couple of walls before summer's over. And then once, we, and so for, for that reason, we just want to have it the best condition possible. It's going to be great, but we want to have it just pristine by September, September 15th. That's when you want to bring all your friends. We're going to have a big grand opening. We're going to get the word out. We're going to have invite cards. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be a great summer, a great fall. Amen? Sound good? All right. Exciting times. Well, we're, we're in the book of Acts. Have you been uh, encouraged or strengthened through our journey so far? Hopefully it's been speaking to you. I would encourage you just even in your own time, like do a Bible plan. Read through the book of Acts. Read a chapter every day. You can do it in a month if you do that. Uh, finish the book of Acts and read through the book of Acts, follow along, and I think um, you'll get even more from it. Maybe uh, choose some key verses that speak to you and memorize those and just bury them in your heart. Um, and I think that would be so powerful if we did that as a church. Um, one encounter with Jesus can change a life. And one life can change thousands. One one, 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 uh, one study says that the average person influences 80,000 people in their lifetime. And the, life, ex the average life expectancy is 78 years. So you have the chance to impact about two point people every day of your life. How many of those will we impact for the glory of God? And in such a way that they... Taste and see the goodness of God in our lives. I've been talking to, since last week about, from the book of Acts, about some principles, some keys to being a church of encounter. Uh, a church where uh, people encounter Jesus. They encounter the reality of God. Church is not merely a, an event. It's not just a building, is it? Is it just something we mark on our calendars and we go the, I don't know, whatever it is, 1.8 times the average churchgoer goes to church these days? It's like something like 1.8, less than two times a month. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? No, we, we are the church. Isn't that true? That you are the church. You, not you in isolation, not you individually alone, because the church, remember, is made up of many members. You wouldn't say that your arm is the body. <laughs> you wouldn't tell your toe, you are the body. But in connection to the rest of your members, that is your body. Can I get an amen in the house today? 
And so the church is not just one member, but it's many members, and we are all vital roles. And, and it doesn't matter if you're on a platform, doesn't matter if you speak or teach, doesn't matter if you have a title or position, you are critical to the body. In fact, most of the heroes of the first century church in the book of Acts go unnamed. We know about Peter, we know about Paul, first half, Peter's prominence for the majority of the book of, book of Acts, authored by Luke, inspired by the Holy Spirit. We see that Paul, after his, Saul, after his conversion, he becomes Paul, he has an encounter with Christ, he becomes born again, he becomes a devout follower of Jesus, a, an incredible teacher and preacher, an advocate of the faith, defender of the faith, theologian, church planter, missionary, all of that. Uh, and the majority of the of of the book of Acts will tell the story of the apostle Paul and how he God used him to influence the 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 the, the church and the expansion of the church beyond Jerusalem. But it was an encounter that they experienced. It was an encounter in, in Acts chapter 1 in the prayer. It was an encounter in chapter 2 when people were filled with the Holy Spirit. It was an encounter with, the, with, with Jesus that caused Peter to be one moment a coward, but then the next he's transformed into this powerful preacher who preaches a message and thousands come to faith just like that. It was an encounter. Somebody said, we need encounters today. We don't just need tradition. We need encounters. We don't just need rules and regulations. We need encounters. The reason why people sometimes we're, we're so, we have a difficult time with church is because we lack an encounter. Because the human soul doesn't just crave for, for, for traditions, right? We don't just tr crave to be told what to do. We don't just crave even to be in a, a, a religious individual. We crave to have connection with God. And connection with God, experience with God is encountered. That's why Jesus went to the cross so we could encounter him, so that we could experience that he would be with us even to the end of the age, so he could send the Holy Spirit to indwell with us and baptize us and give us power to live holy lives and to overcome the power of sin and to make a difference in the world with boldness and authority. Because we've had an encounter. Remember, last week we mentioned that the, they, they, they wondered, why are these men the way they are when they looked at the apostles and they came to the realization they're bold, they, they, they're fearless. Why? Because they, they've been with Jesus. They had an encounter. When you have an encounter with God, you're never the same. When, when, when Moses encountered the burning bush, he encountered God and it changed his life. When David spent time in the shepherd fields before he was king he was having encounter after encounter after encounter and it prepared him to slay giants because he walked with God he knew God he encountered God when, when, when Mary was prepared to be to give supernatural birth to the Messiah and bring him into the world and conceive him by the power of the Holy Spirit it was because she encountered the power of God and not of men when Elijah called down fire from heaven and burned up the altars of Baal. There was an encounter, an encounter. People need more than just fancy teaching and preaching. People need more as important is, as doctrine is, is. It's critical. But they need doctrine and teaching and preaching and churches that lead them into an encounter with the living God. We need more churches that are like burning bushes today. We need more believers that are like burning bushes today. People don't want to encounter you or me. They want to encounter God. But sometimes all they get is us. All they get is me and my personality and my preferences and my, my distinctness. And listen, we live in a generation that's infatuated with themselves. I call it the selfie generation. It's amazing to me how many people love to take pictures of themselves. I mean, yeah, you're, you're all good. Tell somebody you're good looking. Make them feel better because that's why they take so many pictures. Because ain't nobody told them that on a wall. Tell them you're good looking. Just be careful. <laughs> but, man, <laughs> it's like change the angle. look a little different like that. No, you, you, you look the same. <laughs> You look the same that you did yesterday at the same time when you posted that picture. <laughs> we do it for our five likes. I might, I might delete later. What the? 
you should delete it now. <laughs> it's like, delete it now. No hate, though, no shade. I'm just saying that we need to confess that we are obsessed with ourselves. But the early church, they were obsessed with God. They weren't perfect by any means, but they were obsessed with this God they encountered in the upper room. The apostles were obsessed with making sure other people could encounter the resurrected Savior they encountered. When you have encountered Christ, you die, and he lives. That's, that, that, that's tough, isn't it? It's only tough because there's a part of us that's alive. When Jesus said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him pick up his cross, deny himself, and follow me. See, it's not just saying a prayer. Discipleship is a lifelong death that leads to everlasting life. And Jesus said that if you want to find life, then be willing to give it up. That's hard, though, isn't it? Because me and my Western uh, th mindset and uh, all the stuff I've been pumped with up with, you know, through, and especially today, tells me that God exists to make me happy, to give me a bigger house, <laughs> to give me more money, to make sure he, that I am healthy. And don't get me wrong, man, I pray for those things too. How many pray for that stuff? I'm like, Lord, I could do more if you just bless me, but more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hook a, hook, a, hook your boy up. You own the cattle on a thousand hills. Trust me, I won't. I, I, trust me, I won't turn down a blessing. Can I get a witness in the house right now? I, I, I prophesy somebody want to give me a house. <laughs> you know, but I'm, I'm joking, by the way. But here's the thing. The Bible's not about me. It's not about my story. I'm not David, I'm not Elijah, I'm not Samuel, I'm not John, I'm not Peter, and everybody, everything else that we make ourselves. We always make, we have this way of making ourselves, like people didn't do selfies without cell phones for ages, right? And every sermon's about how I am. I'm David, I'm going to slay the giant. There's absolutely, I preach this stuff, right? It's true. But you know what? I'm not David. Because David was a foreshadowing of the greater David. Jesus is the giant slayer. Can I get him in? Goliath is sin and Satan and death. I couldn't defeat the, those Goliaths on my own. He's David. In fact, if anything, I'm the Philistines. Sometimes I'm Goliath and I need to come down so that he can resurrect and rise in my life and prevail. Sometimes we need to acknowledge, God, I'm not David, I'm Goliath, and I've been opposing you for too long. <laughs> And I need some mind renewal. He, David took off Goliath's head. Can I get an amen right now? <laughs> You're like, Lord, take my mind. Don't cut off my head, but take my mind <laughs> and renew it. Let's get, let's get into this. Uh, back to Acts. Acts chapter 4, verse 35, uh, 34 and 35. We're going to keep talking about what it means to be a church, a people, a congregation, a community where people encounter guys. I want to encounter Jesus every week I get together with you guys. How many want that? Listen, I got an attitude sometimes. You got an attitude sometimes. I have a bad day. You have a bad day. But you know what else that we have in common? We serve a good God. Or you can if you don't serve him yet. For, uh, uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 34. How many have that? Nor was there anyone among the, them who lacked. Tell your neighbor, you can beat lack. Anybody come in lacking something today? Lacking? Slacking? Some of y'all walked in like you lacking some loving. <laughs> You're like, I had a rough night last night because uh, she wasn't in the mood for affection. Or he wasn't in the mood for affection. Or we're lacking because we didn't get that raise that we were hoping for. Or we're looking for gainful employment. L let me tell you something. God is bigger than lack. Tell somebody, encourage him. God is bigger than lack. Check this out. From the get-go, early er, first century church, God was providing. This is how he did it. There was, nor was there anyone among them who lacked. Not a single person lacked, okay? No one was broke. No one was without. No one was hungry. And this is why. For all who were possessors of lands or houses, ha, <laughs> sold them. 
Can you imagine getting up one Sunday and saying, hey, guys, today is sell your house Sunday. <laughs> sell your house because we got missions and we got needs and there's people over here who are, who are struggling and we want to make sure nobody has a lack. This was the move of God in the first century. Why? Because when God is, the, the greater the move of God, the less of self there is the, to get in the way. People just cared more about what God was doing in each other than they cared about just their own prosperity. Can I get a witness in the house today? So this is what they did. They sold them. They brought the proceeds of the things that were sold. Now, that doesn't mean that that's, that, that, that's law. Okay, every, every, every one of us, we got to sell everything. But what is the thing that God might be asking of you today? Some of y'all are like, Pastor Matt, I for sure ain't selling nothing. I want to get in the house too, but I ain't selling my house. I ain't selling my house. My kid, but not my house. <laughs> Stop that, you bad boy. <laughs> I No, I ain't, I ain't selling. But I've seen God do this. I've seen God do this where, where people will have this, this, this supernatural generosity. I've seen people hand over the keys to the vehicle and just give it the car for, for, for missions or for outreach or for a new church building so lives can be impacted. I've seen people give away their homes. I've seen people uh, forsake their jobs for the sake of the gospel. When God's moving in your life, there's always something to give and there's always something to receive. Can I get an amen? And so they sold their stuff and they brought the proceeds of the things that were sold. In verse 35 it says, and they laid them at the apostles' feet and they distributed it to each one as they had need. So here's what's going on. This revival breaks loose. The Holy Spirit pours out on Pentecost. You have all these thousands of people who are there getting filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, you have the, the disciples getting filled with the Holy Spirit. They're speaking in other tongues. And people are like, how are they speaking my language? What's going on? And people are just confounded. They're dumbfounded. They're like, how is this happening? How are they speaking in my native tongue? Because people are coming to, to, from all different regions for this big religious event. And when they witness this supernatural event, they're like, how could this happen? And Peter sees this, and he sees this an opportunity to be a witness, and he starts preaching the gospel. And he starts unpacking Old Testament scripture, telling about how it was a promise that the Holy Spirit would be poured out in the last days. How many know we're still in the last days? I think we're in the last of the last days. And so he starts preaching the gospel and thousands come to faith. But in, 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 in the midst of that... This revival break and lose their face with a bit of a dilemma. What's the dilemma? All these people getting saved, but now they don't want to go home because there's no one else where they can hear about Jesus. They got to stay in Jerusalem. So people are leaving properties. People are leaving, leaving, their, they're leaving their stuff. They're not going back to their jobs. They're gonna, they're not, at the very least, we're going to stay here for a while because we got to understand what this new faith is about. What this, we got to understand how to live this thing out. So you have all these thousands of people who are coming to faith, and now the church is like, how is everybody going to, how are they going to eat? Where are they going to sleep? So you know what happened? Supernatural generosity permeated the congregation. Why? Because souls matter. And the mindset of the early church was that we can't just draw, leave our babies out to die and send them back. We got to keep them. We got to disciple them. We got to gather them with us. Bring them into our homes. Break bread. Teach them the way. And so they said, I'll sell my house. I'll sell my land. I've got land. I've got land. I can sell it so we can provide so that these people can continue to grow in the faith, get discipled, and know what it means to follow Jesus. That's what supernatural generosity can, can accomplish. And if people are going to encounter Jesus, here's, a, here's, a, here's, a, here's a, it, it, what it's going to take. It's going to take radical generosity. We've got to practice radical generosity. Because generosity always fuels the mission and vision of the local church. You may not be called to sell your house, but maybe one day you will. You may not be called to leave a job to go to a mission field, but maybe one day you will. You might not be called to give up your car, but maybe one day you will. You know, I grew up, and I've, one of the wonderful things about my parents growing up in their home is they always modeled generosity. It was incredible. I remember when my parents would go up to the pastors, and they, they wouldn't go up to the pastors. They, they would sneak in, and they would leave an envelope just to hook up the pastor when we were kids. And they would watch out, like, oh, I'm not saying do that to me, but if you want to, I won't turn you down. But that's just what I saw. 
I, I, I remember when the, and she, we had, must have had 30, 40 people over our childhood who lived with us. Families, individuals, we had people who lived in our backyard. We had 20 young dudes, people out of prison, drug addicts who lived in our garage. We had people sleeping in my mom's living room. We had families with three, four kids at a time. There were times where we gave up our bunk, our bunk beds so that they could have space. And we, oh, we didn't mind as kids. I'm like, cool, I'm chilling with mama and papa. I'm going to sleep on the flow. It's a party. <laughs> so we had a good old time. That was our childhood. But we saw generosity just modeled. They lived this way of generosity, and it, it was part of, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was imp imparted to us, it was infused in our hearts. Generosity is having a heart that is connected to the abundance and the unlimited nature of the kingdom of God. The poverty mindset always says, I can't. Right? Always talking the language I can't afford. Now, that might be true, but listen, I would challenge you to be careful about how you, you speak in front of your kids. Hey, how many times I was broke and I was like, <laughs> with my kids growing up, and I'm like, oh, shoot. Daddy, can we go to Chuck E. Cheese? I wish they would ask that these days because I'm ready to whoop them on some basketball. Y'all know. But they ain't ready for it. That's why we haven't been back in a few years. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't care what KO says. <laughs> but there would be times it would just break my heart. Any parents ever been there? You're like, <sighs> and we know this. We know that material things are not everything, right? That peace and joy in a healthy home, healthy marriage, godly parents, that's, that's you can never put a, 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 a a, va a monetary value on that, right? But here's the thing. You were parents. We want to always try to give our kids, kids the best. I have those moments. I would be like, I wish. Oh, shoot, sometimes I do stuff I just couldn't afford. <laughs> then answer to my boss, my wife. <laughs> See, I'm the yes person in the family, and she's the no person. How many got that? You know what I'm talking about? Some of you, it's flipped, but I'm, I'm like the, yeah, let's do that. Let's go. Okay. She's like, What? No. <laughs> but we have to be careful about what we're speaking, because even though it might be our present condition, it, it doesn't have to be your future condition. So rather, what I had to learn grow early on in parenting is this. I might not be able to do it, but I would post things like, how can we do that? What would it take to do that? Or not now. Well, why don't you get some side hustles? I would look for opportunities to teach them values that would, they would that, are you with me right now? So that wouldn't have a lack mindset. That even if you can't have it now, it doesn't mean you can never have it. Doesn't mean that God, the scripture, Deuteronomy, God's giving you the power to obtain wealth, to produce wealth. That's still true. But sometimes we don't want to exercise that power. Are you all with me right now? Come on, let's be real. Sometimes we stay stuck in a certain con condition spiritually or otherwise or financial because the reality is we're used to it. There's a certain level of comfort. We still complain about it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's so hard. I'm struggling. But we are, we, we, the, the pain of staying in that state is not painful enough for us to make change. I don't know if this is helping anybody. So rather... We try to encourage and raise our kids with a, a, a spirit of generosity, doing our best to model it, to speak generosity, to live generously for the glory of God. I remember f families coming over, and my my parents would have no they, they they had we had to, they were doing well. My dad was doing well. This time we're living in a nice middle class neighborhood in Southern California, and sometimes families were struggling. They couldn't get to church. I remember one day my kid, my parents would have a thrill. They one day they take the keys and they're like, and gave these families cars, their cars, and their their these families would drive out of our garage with our car, my car, my car. But you know, you should have seen the joy. Because a generous heart is fulfilled not in living for self, but for living for the glory of God and the good of others.
Can I get an, an amen in the house right now? This was the early church. They're like, how can we do better? How can we, how can we continue to give people the greatest gift, which is not just our money, but the impact that results because we sacrificed lands and property so that they could have spiritual life. Listen, I don't want to just give money away. I want to give something that lasts eternally. My money might prepare the way, but there's a bigger goal at the end of the day. I tithe. I give offerings. I do imagine. Why do I do that? Because there's a face and a name at the end of every dollar and offering that's going to say because of your sacrifice my children are serving the Lord because of your generosity we're in the house of God because you gave we live that's what generosity does and the early church knew this and so they made a way and it's amazing it's amazing that when everybody's generous there's no need when there's, listen, if everybody tithed, we wouldn't have to do an Imagine campaign. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do you know, Pastor Matt? We'll take the average income, the median income in the, in, in, the, in the city, and then you divide that by the number of people in the church. And, you, and if they gave a tithe based on that average, it average, that's like, whoa. But here's the reality. <laughs> Ten, the, 90% won't give their 10%. This is not co to condemn. This is to say we could change lives, more lives. Because nobody ever complains when it's their son or daughter who's off the streets because of someone else's sacrifice. <laughs> Help me. What, what kind of clap is that? <laughs> You're like, <sighs> somebody was grabbing their wallet like this. They're like, You know what? We're going to be generous for today. We're going to be generous for today. Because there's a young man in the house who has been generous with us. With his time and opening the doors for us and making sure we had a place every Sunday when we shouldn't have had a place. And his name is Dylan. And last week, Dylan, this is his last Sunday serving as our custodian here. Because he came with the building, but he's leaving with us. Ha! Come on. We love you, Dylan. Hey, look at that. Come on. Stand to your feet. Show some love to Dylan today. Come on, stand to your feet, show them some honor today, church. Come on, guys, come on. Come on. We love you, Dylan. Dylan, 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 Dylan. You are loved, Dylan. You are family to us. God loves you. He has a marvelous plan for your life. There's nothing I could say in this moment that's more true. And we are so grateful because you yourself have been a gift to us. And we are so grateful for you. And um, you served this past week. It touched my heart that you just showed up and you gave your time a couple nights of the week. And he's like, I'm going to come out again this week. Thank you. Because... I don't know Dylan's personal. I don't know about his situation. I'm sure he's doing great. He's doing fine. He's got a nice job. He's a great, good-looking guy, by the way, if you want to get married someday and you're single. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I feel like God put it on my heart today. He said, I want you to take care of Dylan because he's taking care of my kids. He's taking care of my house. <laughs> I am personally giving $500 to, to Dylan just to say we, I love you. Um, and if he wants to go on a vacation, he wants to do whatever he wants to do. If he wants to buy fresh clothes, new kicks, whatever he wants to do, he can do. Take, take a girl on a nice dinner, you know, say, Mom, I love you, <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever he wants to do. But I think there's a lot of generous people who say, you know what, I, I want to bless somebody. I want to get out of my own self, and I want to bless Dylan. How many say, I want to do, do something? I want to give 100, I want to give two. I want to give 20, 50. How many, come on. <laughs> so this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray. Because God's opening up some doors, we're going to pray God would prosper that. We're going to pray God bless Dylan um, in the door opportunity he's going to have. But um, they'll put it on the screen. You, you can put our get website, tfhnatopus.church slash give. And there's a tab you can pull down, and it actually says, not ties. It doesn't say, guess what it says? It said Dylan! <laughs> Nobody's ever had their name put on our giving website. That's how much we love you, how much God loves you, Dylan. And so you can give that way, but we're gonna Art's going to pass this after we pray and pass it down the aisle. 
And we're going to live out this principle right now. Is that okay? Listen, the only thing we get out of this is saying we show the love of Jesus and let God love through us. And that is more than enough, isn't it? So let's pray for him. Stretch your hands out, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for Dylan. God, he brings hope to the students he works with. Oh, God, he may not always be acknowledged, but now you acknowledge him. And, God, we pray nothing but the favor of God over his life. We pray that doors of opportunity and favor will open him, open for him in his life, in his job situation, God, that nothing would come between your blessing, God. We pray joy and peace and the most profound awareness of your love for him. Jesus loves Dylan. And we're just the messengers. God, right now, thank you for this man. Thank you that you created him in, his, in your image just like you made every one of us. And there's a whole lot of God's image we see in Dylan. And we pray, God, refresh him today. And maybe he, he doesn't always feel loved or, or cherished in other places, but he would always know that in the kingdom of God, he is loved. And in this house, he is loved. We bless him in your name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give it up one more time. We love you. <laughs> hey, I want to see at least a couple thousand come in and let's do that. Come on. We, I know we got our building project, but listen, let's sow because it's going to come back. Amen. So go to the tab, the website, TFHS Tomas. You can have a seat. Dot church slash give. And Art's going to pass the basket if you want to drop some cash or an offering envelope. It'll all go to bless Dylan. And I believe God's going to bless you. He's going to bless our church. Isn't it good to try to actually be intentional about living this stuff? When we live generously, when we sow into things that advance the kingdom and change lives, that reach the lost, people encounter God. They do. Generosity is not about an amount, is it? To one person giving a million dollars is nothing. <laughs> Probably not here, maybe. But there are people in the world and you could drop a million dollars just like that and say, ah, millionaires and multimillionaires, billionaires. But there's some people who give 10 bucks, 50 bucks, 20 bucks, 100, and it's everything. Generosity is the condition of the heart. Right? And that's why we give. That's why we, we give as a church. It's not just about us. It's about the people God's called us to love. It's about people like Dylan. I'm not even going to finish the rest of my message because I feel like I'm going to take away from what the Holy Spirit's doing right now. Is that all right? I think I'm done. That's just let him do what he wants to do. Amen. Worship team, come on up. Gosh. I hate when he ruins the, the, the great message I prepared. I spent all that time, Lord. <laughs> it's not about me. And they're passing that basket. And you, if, you're, if you've given, you can stand with us. The worship team's coming forward. I'm going to pray right now. Jesus. Oh. Thank you, Lord. God, thank you for your generosity. That you would give Jesus, the Son of God, for my sin. Thank you for your generosity, God. That you would save me and my kids, my family, our people, and many to come who are not yet here. Lord, there's some people here who have been praying for sons and daughters, husbands, wives, friends. And your generosity will be revealed they too will experience the gift of God's love and grace, forgiveness of sins in your life. There are some here right now. Something's touching their heart, and I believe it's you, your Holy Spirit. 
He is saying, I want you to know me. I want you to receive my love. God, I pray for those right now in this moment who are they're in the fight, they're struggling, struggling in life. Maybe they don't lack financially, maybe they do, but maybe they lack spiritually. They're like, I don't have peace here because I'm searching. I pray that right now that the riches of heaven would manifest in their hearts in the presence of God. Oh, Jesus, do it. pray for the person right now who says, there's so much I want to do. I want to be so much more generous, but man, I don't have a job right now. Or God, I pray that you would give them wisdom and direction and provision right now in Jesus' name. Pray for the person who's lacking in the area of meaningful relationships. They feel alone. They come into rooms that are crowded, but they still feel alone. But they're not alone, God. God, help them. Give them a, a, a revelation of the God who wants to be near to those whose hearts are hurting and lonesome. God, as we venture into this new exciting chapter, this new home, we are grateful for your generosity. And we're so grateful for those who give and sacrifice so that lives can keep being influenced and impacted. Bless them. In our first Sunday, we'll bring those commitment cards, God, and we're going to step out together as a family, and we're trusting you're going to do something special. Help us not to forget why it is, though. It's for one more life, one more family, one more couple, one more student, one more suicidal teenager, one more broken-hearted mother, one more drunk in, a, in an alley who no one seems to care about, one more. One more decent person, but who's empty inside. One more to know that Jesus still saves. If you're here today, I'd like to lead in a simple prayer of faith. And if you say, I want to know this Christ, this Savior who compels people to give like they do. And in this prayer, I'm gonna, we're going to confess that we believe that he died on the cross, took judgment for our sins, that he resurrected on the third day. He is the son of God, greater than death, and he is alive, seated at the right hand of the Father. We're going to confess our repentance of our sins, even though we're not perfect and we never will be, that we're going to become more like Christ. He's going to show us a better way than any way we've ever known. So on the count of three, if you'd like to make that decision to take a step to follow Christ as your Lord and Savior today, a simple prayer. I'd like to lead you in that prayer. So one, if you believe. Two, if you want to surrender your life to Jesus. Three, now's your time. Will you raise your hand? Anyone in this place? God bless you. Anyone who says, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus today. I'm ready to come back. I lost my way, but I'm ready to come back home. God bless you. There's a hand right there. Anyone else? Anyone else? Just raise your hand. If you raise your hand, just leave it up. They're going to put a card in your hand, fill it out, drop it off at the tent so we can send you some next steps and resources. Church, will you pray with those who are making this so important, ever important decision today? Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God who died on the cross for my sins. Thank you for your generosity. You gave your life, the greatest life, for me so I could come home. Thank you for accepting me in your family. I am yours forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the family. If you made that decision today, welcome. The angels celebrate you. Listen, we want to help you with the next step. Make sure you fill out that card, that orange card. If you didn't get one, grab one at the tent. Turn it into the tent. And we'd love to connect you after service. Listen, we're going to sing this song. We're going to end a little bit different today. We're going to sing this song one time through. And as we sing this, our, our people who are getting baptized. We'd love for you to celebrate for a few moments outside, out the front doors to the left. They're celebrating new life, going into the waters of baptism. 
And so you can join us as we sing this song. You can make your way over there. They're going to get ready. And uh, we'd love to have you celebrate with them, their fa family and, and, and loved ones and their friends and small groups. It's going to be a powerful moment. And if you'd like to sign up for water baptism, it'll be in our new building ne next time. Uh, make sure you sign up at the tent before you leave. Amen. Let's sing this song one time through worship team. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, TFH family, we are so glad you were able to join us for our online experience. We want to stay connected with you, and one way you can do that is to follow us on all socials at TFH and Comics. Also, if you've never been to our Sunday services, I encourage you to come to our 10.30 a.m. services every Sunday. 